How's it going guys? I'm Robert from Machado Visuals and I want to give a quick rundown on my A7S rig. First, I want to stress that I pretty much never plan on outfitting the camera like this. My main goal was to test the camera in a production environment and for that, I need a production grade rig. Now, I'm going to be up front here. Most of these parts are from wooden camera. Now, a lot of people might be turned off because of this, because of their prices, but if I'm being honest, their products are super high quality and easily deployable on set. Chances are you'll be able to find a small rig equivalent throughout this video, and if that's what floats your boat, then float on. Starting with the cage, I'm rocking the small unified DSLR cage. The handle folds down when storing the camera and can also flip sides to accommodate accessories like the K3M. One of my favorite features about the system is the compatibility with Aerie style dovetails. Dovetails are great because it makes balancing the rig super easy. Since my Vista Primes are EF mount, I'm using a Metabones adapter. The Vista Primes make a great pairing with the full frame sensor of the A7S. The fall off characteristics are much more apparent when compared to Super 35. Of course, the crowning jewel of any camera rig is the map box, which is where the majority of your cool points come from. I'm using the UMB1 and have upgraded to three filter stages. And this gives a lot of flexibility with filtration when needed. With the three stages, I'm able to use cosmetic filters while stacking NDs or even a variable ND with a cosmetic filter. My follow focus system is the Teradek RT. I'm using the extension arm since the motors get a bit awkward when attached to the 15mm rods, so the arm places the motor at a bit of an angle for optimal torque. There was no real elegant way to mount the motor driver because of the camera size, so it's mounted right on top of the cage. I actually did a review on the system about a month ago, so be sure to check it out if you haven't already. When using motors as powerful as these, a lens support is pretty much necessary. I'm using the Bright Tangerine Morsi lens support, which locks the lens in place and reduces stress on the lens mount. Moving towards the back of the camera, we have a gold mount sandwich starting with a battery plate that includes a dummy battery to power the camera. You pretty much never see V-mounts in the world of production, so I always recommend going with gold mounts if you can. Attached to the gold mount plate is a mounting bracket for a Teradek transmitter, which also doubles as a pass-through plate, so I can top off my sandwich with a C-box. This takes the A7S III signal and redistributes it to three SDI and HDMI outputs. I despise using HDMI cables, so having access to three separate SDI outputs makes receiving a video signal much easier on set. If you're doing any long cable runs for a live production, for example, using SDI is essential. This cage does allow you to use the K3M module, which is great because it's able to accept full-size XLR or quarter-inch connections while delivering phantom power, which is a must when using shotgun mics. Now many of you are quick to point me to Gerald Undone's video regarding the 24-bit audio issue. Thanks for that. Now, although these issues do have workarounds, production doesn't operate on the promise of workarounds, and you have to understand that I'm generally hired as a cinematographer, and my job usually ends when I hand off footage to the client, which is usually to a production company or a producer. At the end of the day, I don't know who's editing, and I'm not going to constantly follow up with a producer explaining how they have to rewrap all my footage just because I chose to shoot in a specific audio setting. I've heard that Adobe has already updated Premiere to solve this issue, but I didn't resolve, so I'm not so lucky. Of course, if you're editing your own footage, this isn't nearly as much of a big deal, but it's still important to note. Also, I still don't buy that this camera has dual ISO. I'm not saying I definitively know what it is, but I'd love to be proven wrong by anything other than pure speculation or YouTube's very scrupulous camera engineers. Either way, I intend to stick with native ISO whenever I'm shooting S-Log. Log gamma curves are designed at a specific ISO to produce the largest capable latitude. Now, I'm not denying there's some sort of black magic going on at 12,800. I'm just saying that if I'm shooting at 12,800, chances are I'm in a low light situation. And if I'm in a low light situation, chances are capturing an image with proper exposure has a higher priority than maximizing dynamic range. The light situations tend to not have a lot of highlights. Because of this, I'll usually pick another picture profile, which also yields better noise performance. With all that being said, don't let me stop you from using the camera however you want to use it. I'm just giving my perspective on how I plan on using the camera as a cinematographer. Now, although I have the camera rigged out, I'll probably never use it like this. We're starting to look very similar to an FX9, not only in terms of form factor, but also cost. With everything you see here, we're totaling out to over $10,000, and at that point, I'd probably prefer an FX9 anyway. But one of the reasons I'm so excited about this camera is that it's finally at the point where you don't necessarily need to rig out the camera to get through a shoot. For the most part, the camera's all you need. At the end of the day, it depends on your needs. If you want to rig out your camera with a bunch of widgets, feel free. It all boils down to how well the camera works for you. Either way, it's an exciting time to get into cameras. Hopefully this video was helpful in some way. I'm fully aware a rig like this may not be the most practical, but it was more of a stress test to me, and I think the camera passed. I actually did a camera rigging live stream a few weeks back with Jeremy Lee, so be sure to check out that video for a more in-depth look on our choice of camera rigging. I've obviously been enjoying this camera a lot and have been taking it out more and more as a camera on jobs. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.